What's up, everybody? We are doing the Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth Magic the Gathering set full review. We've done all the single colors. We've done white, we've done blue, black, red, green, and gold cards. Now it's time to round out the set and take a look at colorless and land cards. This is a bit of a shorter set because there's a lot of equipment and a few lands, but really all of the meat and potatoes is in that um, gold section with all those legendary creatures. And there's 300 cards in this set, so there's a lot going on uh, regardless of how many or how few colorless and lands there are. Um, but let's get going. Um, again, I'm going to apologize for butchering all of the Tolkien uh, verbiage and names. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube later, it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to our channel. We're trying to get that number up. Um, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. You don't have to do it right now. Maybe in a little bit if you decide you like it. Definitely show it some love. And comment below which of these cards we're about to talk about is your most anticipated card from the colorless and land segment go back and watch the other segments if you haven't yet if you magically wound up on this video um this is the end of the set review so definitely go back it's all going to be in the same playlist so find those other videos check out the other cards this set is really cool i'm very excited to start building some decks around it um or adding some of these pieces to existing decks as a reminder, this is not a standard or pioneer legal deck or um, set. This is a Modern Horizons type supplementary set. It is legal in historic or modern uh, legacy commander. Um, pretty much anything that's older than pioneer and and beyond um, is, is it's legal in so it's not going to be in those constructed formats that uh, you're seeing at many pro tours or at your fnm um, so keep that in mind this is definitely geared towards modern players and commander players commander players especially um, so that's what magic have been doing the last few years with their summer sets it's been less focused on competitive constructive formats and more focused on social evergreen formats um but yeah let's jump into the colorless and land cards this is anduril anduril i'm pretty sure you roll your r in that flame of the west anduril flame of the west three colorless mana for a mythic equipment legendary artifact equipped creature gets th plus three plus one that's not that great Whenever equipped creature attacks, create two tapped 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. If that creature is legendary, instead create two of those tokens that are tapped and attacking, and your equip cost is two. So you want to put this on uh, a legendary creature, like, um, obviously, um, Aragorn in the photo there, in the painting. Um, because then you get two attacked, attacking, uh, tokens. My brain is like losing it right now. I think I'm coming, I'm coming down. Uh, quick coffee. So you want to attach it to a legendary creature because then you get the benefit of those tokens coming in tapped and attacking rather than just tapped. Um, but obviously making extra tokens is not a bad thing regardless so if you can't attach it to a legendary creature it's not terrible but it definitely gets a lot better if you attach it to a legendary creature next up is barrow blade for one colorless you get an artifact equipment equipped creature gets plus one plus one whenever equipped creature blocks or becomes blocked by a creature that creature loses all abilities until end of turn equip one interesting Whenever equipped creature blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, that creature loses all abilities. So whoever's blocking or being blocked by it loses all of its abilities. That's interesting. You could shut down some really important abilities with this one sword. And it's just a one mana, one mana to equip. That's pretty good. Uh, next up we have Ent Drought Basin. 
two mana for an artifact. X and tap it to put 1-1 one, one counter on target creature with power X. Activate only as a sorcery. So you have to pay to match the power of the creature to only wind up putting a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Not fantastic, but it's not the worst. Next up we have Glamdring. Gandalf's beautiful weapon. Uh, two mana for a legendary artifact equipment, a mythic sword. Equipped creature has first strike and gets plus one plus oh for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. Oh my god. Uh, this, this Gandalf combo thing with instants and sorceries is just brutal. It's so strong. Uh, whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand with mana value less than or equal to that damage without paying its mana cost. Wow. Um, and its equip cost is three. That is stupendous. I think that is fantastic. I want Glamdring real bad. Uh, next up is Horn of Gondor. Three mana for a legendary artifact. When Horn of Gondor enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Then you can pay three, tap it to create X-1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens where X is the number of humans you control. So you get to double your amount of humans for three mana. Three mana to cast this and then three mana to activate it and you get to double your humans basically which is cool it's a flavor win when you blow the horn of gondor all the humans of gondor show up to fight battle so you're essentially doubling your army or whatever very cool horn of the mark two mana for a legendary artifact whenever two or more creatures you control attack a player look at the top five cards of your library you may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. That one's a little cool too. I think that's that's fun. It's fair. It's slow, but it's also not expensive, so it's it's not bad. Next up is Inherited Envelope. Three mana for an artifact, a common artifact. When Inherited Envelope enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you, and you can tap to add one mana of any color. So it's a mana rock plus the added benefit of the ring tempting you. Um, that's not bad. It's like a expensive soul ring. Next up we have Lembas. Two mana for an artifact food. When Lembas enters the battlefield, scry one, then draw a card. You can pay two, tap it, sacrifice Lembas, you gain three life, so like any food. Uh, when Lembas is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, its owner shuffles it into their library. Fun, so you can like keep coming back for more. Get as, get as much Lembas as you can. Uh, next up we have Mirror of Galadriel. Two mana for a legendary artifact. Uh, it has an activated ability of 5 mana plus tap to scry one, then draw a card. This ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature you control, so it could cost nothing. Uh, if you have 5 legendary creatures, then you just get to tap it, scry one, and draw. That's pretty good. Something to work towards. I like artifacts or enchantments that um, are relatively cheap to cast or get onto the battlefield turn online and then steadily get cheaper and cheaper you can work towards something to make it uh, advantageous for you to cast it or use it uh, next up is mithril coat three mana for a legendary artifact equipment with flash and indestructible when mithril coat enters the battlefield attach it to target legendary creature you control equipped creature has indestructible so again this it's rare for equipment to have flash and uh, this whole ember cleave thing where you can flash it out um, artifacts and equipments aren't normally combat tricks but this is uh, an exception and giving an equ uh, a creature indestructible is very strong and next up we have the one ring 
Uh, this is a four colorless mana legendary artifact at mythic rare. It is indestructible when the round. Sausage, sausage. When the one ring enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you gain protection from everything until your next turn. Okay. So you're basically putting the ring on, disappearing. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life for each bird encounter on the one ring. Oh. You can tap it to put a bird encounter on the one ring, then draw a card for each bird encounter on the one ring. So the more you use it to benefit yourself, the more damage it does to you. That's a very cool mechanical flavor win, I think. The one ring has a very cool design. I love that. It's, it's good... To it's beneficial to use it, like in the books and the movies. It's it, Frodo can escape dangerous situations when he uses the ring. Um, but every time he uses it, he puts himself further and further in danger. And this deals one damage to you for each bird encounter on it and gives you a bunch of cards. Um, so you're benefiting yourself, but also putting yourself in more danger. I love that. That's a very good... Uh, next up is Palantir of Orthanc. Orthonk. It's three colorless for a legendary artifact. At the beginning of your end step, put an influence counter on Palantir and scry two. Then target opponent may have you draw a card. If that player doesn't, you mill X cards where X is the number of influence counters on Palantir and that player loses life equal to the total mana value of those cards. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. So, you target an opponent. They're going to choose to let you draw a card. It just makes way more sense. Um, but for some reason, if they don't, uh, they could potentially take, like, 20 damage. You mill X cards where X is the number of influence counters. Put an influence counter at the beginning of your end step every turn. Okay, so by the time you get to turn 10, this has seven influence counters on it. Assuming you played this on turn three. Um, so either you get to draw a card or you mill seven cards. And you could potentially do like 10, 15, even 20 damage to your opponent. They're just going to choose draw a card every single time. There's no point in risking it. Next up is File of Galadriel. Three colorless for a legendary artifact. If you would draw a card while you have no cards in hand, draw two instead. If you would gain life while you have five or less life, you gain twice that much life instead. And you can tap the file to add one mana of any color. Interesting. So this helps get you out of the basement a lot faster. I don't mind that. That's fun. I like that. Especially if you're playing an Artifacts Matter deck, this is a really cool um, kind of last-ditch save if you've got some life gain. Uh, I like that. The Shire Scarecrow. Always with the shitty Scarecrow cards. Two colorless for an artifact creature Scarecrow with Defender. You pay one to add one mana of any color. Activate only once each turn. So it filters mana for you. Um... And it's an 0-3 defender for two mana. It's not good. Sting the Glinting Dagger. Ooh, Frodo's little sword. Two colorless for a legendary artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one, and has haste. At the beginning of each combat, untap equipped creature. Dang. So you always have Sting and its equipped creature available for combat. That's good. Uh, equipped creature has first strike as long as it's blocking or blocked by a goblin or orc. Because mm. it lights up when there's like orcs and stuff nearby. That's that's good. I like that. Equip cost is two. Um, you know, obviously it getting a 1-1 one -one is not super powerful. It is a cheap sword. So 1-1 one -one is fine. It's the untapping it every time combat starts it's not it's every combat every turn every combat it untaps um, and it has first strike against uh, goblins or orcs that's really strong 
and it doesn't have to be anything in particular you can attach this to your best creature and it will untap every single combat next up is stone of air reach for one colorless you get a legendary artifact if a creature an opponent control would die exile it instead savage for two mana tap it sacrifice it exile target player's graveyard draw a card i like that this is like strictly better tormod scripts crypt i like that a lot wizard rockets one mana for an artifact wizard wizards rockets enter the battlefield tapped then you can pay x tap it to sacrifice wizards rockets add x mana in any combination of colors i like that when wizards rockets is put into a graveyard from the battlefield draw a card it's not too bad i think that's it for the oh no there's one more bilbo's ring three colorless for a legendary artifact equipment as long as it's your turn equipped creature has hexproof and can't be blocked whenever equipped creature attacks alone you draw a card and lose a life and it's way cheaper to equip it to a halfling frodo bilbo sam any of those uh, it's only cost one or you pay four to equip it to anything else as long as it's your turn equipped creature has hexproof and can't be blocked very cool i like that a lot and that is it for the artifacts let's take a look at some of these lands um baradur is a legendary land uh it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature i feel like that's going to be the case for all of these legendary lands um it taps to add one black or you can pay xx black to tap it a mass orcs x activate only if a creature died this turn so you could pay 10 mana to amass five orc um not the greatest but oh it works it works next up we've got great hall of the citadel it is a normal land tap it to add one colorless or pay one tap it to add two mana in any combination of colors spend it only to cast legendary spells um interesting i like that uh, next up we've got the gray havens legendary land whenever when the gray havens enters the battlefield scry one tap it to add one colorless or tap it to add one mana of any color among legendary creature cards in your graveyard oh because it's havens oh okay get it it's the afterlife um i like that i like that a lot i like utility lands like that um it is a legendary land so you can only have one of them on the battlefield um but these are commander cards for the most part so you're only going to have one of them in your deck anyway next up is minas tirith a legendary land enters tapped unless you control a legendary creature taps to add one white or you can pay one and a white to tap it draw a card activate only if you attacked with two or more creatures this turn Oh, I like that all the activated abilities are color playstyle specific. I like that. Next up, we have Mines of Moria. Oh, I nailed it that time. That's a throwback to the red color review video, um, if you watch that. Mines of Moria is a legendary land. It enters tapped unless you control a legendary creature. It taps to add one red, or you can pay three in a red, tap it, exile three cards from your graveyard to create two treasure tokens. Nice. It digs into your graveyard to make treasures. I like it. Uh, next up, we have Mount Doom, a legendary, a mythic land. How many mythic lands are there? How many mythic? Okay, let me let me do this. Type land. Uh, mana cost, format sets, rarity, mythic, search. Okay, there's a there's a few MDFCs, but there's ancient tomb. Uh, the gateways. Well, apparently all the sack lands are mythic. I didn't know that. Dryad Arbor is mythic. 
desert is mythic. Eye of Ugin is mythic. Okay, so there's a few mythic lands. Not a ton. What is the actual number? 106 mythic lands. And that includes all the MDFCs, which are really mythic on the sorcery inch instant side, not the land side. Um, so there's probably like 70 or so mythic lands. That's pretty good. Anyway, Mount Doom is a legendary land. Tap it, pay one life, add red or black. That's not great. Um, or you can pay one black red to tap it. Mount Doom deals one damage to each opponent. A little bit better. Five black red, tap it, sacrifice Mount Doom and a legendary artifact, like the one ring, and choose up to two creatures, then destroy the rest. Is a full board wipe for everyone but Frodo and Sam. Um, that's pretty cool. For seven mana, you have to lose your land and an artifact you control, a legendary artifact. That's a bit much. Um... I know that they probably made this mythic rare for flavor reasons because it's Mount Doom of all places, but it's not a very good land. I don't... Unless you specifically need to deal one damage to each opponent, like you do in that weird pinger deck from the Warhammer set, um, I don't see this being better than freaking any other red-black land. Uh, next up is Rivendell. Nice. Look at that gorgeous art. Legendary land enters tapped unless you control a legendary creature. Uh, taps to add one blue, or you can pay one and a blue to tap it. Scry to activate only if you control a legendary creature. Uh, the Shire is the green legendary land. Ta enters tapped unless you control a legendary creature. Taps to add green, or you pay one and a green. Tap it to tap it and an untapped creature you control create a food token okay so it's a little bit more complicated to get a food token i'd rather not lose the creature um and then the last land we've got here is the shire terrace it is a colorless land where you can pay one tap it to sacrifice shire terrace search your library for a basic land card put it onto the battlefield tap then shuffle this is actually really cool i like uh evolving wilds those kind of like play a land for turn and then eventually find the land you want um i like those cards especially in formats like commander but this one's even better because at least it taps to add a colorless so it's still useful as a land on its own and then you can find the land you need um if you need a specific color i think that's really cool i think they should do away with um evolving wilds and just make versions like this where it still does something as a land um and not just a sacrifice to find something um i like this i like this but that the only other thing i wanted to quickly show is the one of one ring this is the holy grail of magic collectibles there's only ever going to be one of them printed officially by wizards of the coast this is just a reprint and different art version of this card. The One Ring um, is a very cool version, obviously, and it being serialized and one of one makes it extremely rare. It is going to be officially the rarest card in Magic's history, and it makes sense. It's another flavor win from Wizards of the Coast, printing only one version of the One Ring because... Of course, there's only one ring to rule them all. And with that, I will say thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for always being supportive and welcoming me to magic conversations, to magic events. Um, if you're going to be in Edmonton this weekend at Face to Face, definitely say hi to my pals over at Wizards of the North. Great folks. Uh, going to Edmonton this weekend. Um, I will not be there, but hopefully I'll be able to attend Calgary in August or September or something like that. And yeah, I thank you so much for hanging out. If you're watching on Twitch right now, thanks for chilling. Um, 
I hope you're having a good day if you're watching this on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching this far. It would mean the world to me if you could subscribe, uh, like this video, comment below with which of these colorless or land cards you're most excited about acquiring. As of this weekend, um, the Lord of the Rings set is coming out. So get down to your LGS, pre-order your pre-release kits, buy a box of cards, buy singles, um, build some fun stuff and have some fun. This is a really cool set. Um, I'm really glad it's not standard and pioneer legal because I want that to be serious magic um, and throwing in... You know, obviously I have a lot of love for Lord of the Rings. A lot of people do. There's a lot of reverence and respect there. Um, but I want my magic to stay magic related and then my superfluous magic to be whatever the heck it wants. I think that that's my stance on the universes beyond, as they're calling it. Um, I'm excited to see the Doctor Who stuff. Obviously the Transformers, Fortnite. The Secret Layer stuff is fun. Um, this is the, other than Dungeons and Dragons, this is the first outside of Watsi IP that they're dealing with as far as designing a full set around it. And obviously it's so far from the Magic the Gathering lore that it is not going to be a standard set. It is a supplementary set. It is, um, basically Modern Horizons, Lord of the Rings version it's ma mainly designed for commander players because commander is the biggest format right now it's what most people play so it makes a lot of sense for magic and wizards to design a lot of content and cards and product for those players because the majority of magic players play that format so obviously it's going to shift their design principles and their plans um, but standard is really exciting right now i know we just finished talking for five hours about cards that aren't legal and standard but i'm really excited about where standard is going and competitive magic is back in person and it's a lot of fun to witness and i really hope to qualify one of these days i'm gonna keep at it and hopefully get there uh for now thank you again so much for watching this and i hope that you have the time of your life i hope that you're doing fine I hope that you're feeling safe. I know you're not always going to be happy. Um, everything's not going to feel like it's going right all the time. But I hope at the very least you feel safe and you feel loved and seen. Um, yeah, I hope you see cute dogs. I hope you get a really nice hug. I hope you eat something that's so delicious it makes you feel so present. Um, 